All right, the grip. This is a question I get all the time. What's the best grip? Should I have a weaker grip, a neutral grip, or a stronger grip? Well, let's go over what those are. And I actually did a little test here today where I hit five shots with each grip. I'm gonna tell you what it felt like to me. We're gonna compare swing speed. We're gonna compare carry distance, total distance, and some of the pros and cons of each of these. There's one of these that I really do not like for most all players, even though it can work. Uh, we'll go over that. So let's start off with the, what I would say is a weaker grip. And the way that I would classify this is if I held my club up, this would be toward the sky, and I would take my grip to where my logo my glove is toward the sky. Now, it's still gonna be in the fingers. So when I'm looking here, it's kind of angled and it's below the, the meaty part of the hand. Pretty much all these grips are gonna be like that. When I set up to the golf ball, you'll see the logo of my glove is almost toward the target. And my right hand, the little V between my thumb and my forefinger is more vertical or straight up and down. That's a pretty weak grip by most people's standards. Uh, some players that would have been like this would maybe be like Ben Hogan. Uh, Tiger Woods is not quite that weak, but he's on the weaker side of it. So there's some good players that have that kind of a grip. But the thing that I don't like about this grip is if I want to get some shaft lean and de-loft it, I really have to bow my wrist a ton. I really have to, you know, if I want to get it from the inside, I've got to look like Dustin Johnson or Brooks Kepka or some of those guys to really close it up to get that face square and get some shaft lean. So for me, this was one of the more erratic ones. So when I look at these numbers here, when I go to the chart, I'm gonna see that my average carry distance was 255, which is really low for me. We'll see compared to the other ones, 277 total. My ball speed was 160. My swing speed was 109. So not the best numbers there. That's, we're gonna compare them to the other ones. I feel like I'm trying to hit all these really good, but man, that one feels like a lot of work. You'll also notice when I pull this screen back up to the, the shot patterns, the tracers, it was really sporadic for me. So I'm hitting some that are big slices. I'm hitting some that are big hooks. It's, it's so much of that rotation that it's very difficult for me to get an awareness of exactly where the face is. So I don't like this grip as much either for generating a ton of lag. It's not that you can't do it. It's just you have to have really flexible wrists to be able to square that up, get the lag. It just makes it a little bit tougher for most players. I find most players have trouble getting enough of that bowing. I think almost everybody could get more of that bowing of the wrist or turning of the wrist as they're coming through there. So let's not make it any harder on ourselves. Now the second grip would be just kind of a neutral one here, which would be exactly what I normally take. So here, when I have this club face toward the camera, my club is gonna be slightly closed, probably 10, 15 degrees. And now the grip is up toward the sky. When I set up to the club, you're gonna see that the V between my thumb and my fingers now kind of toward my right side of my chin. My right hand is gonna be more toward my right shoulder. That's traditionally what most people would say is a pretty neutral grip. That's what I usually do with my own grip. So if I look at the numbers there, remember 250 something carry, 109 club head speed. Now we're gonna to go to my neutral grip, 279 carry, picked up about 22 yards of carry, 300 yards total driving distance average. I picked up seven miles an hour of swing speed. I picked up 10 miles an hour of ball speed. Now you could argue that the reason that I did all those things, it's like, well, that's just a different grip. So yeah, Clay, you're gonna play a little bit better if you use your normal grip than you would if you use a weaker grip that you're not used to. But again, the swing speed, I just find that happening. And really when we go into this third one, I'm gonna kind of disprove how playing with a different grip isn't necessarily what's going on. Now, I would say, you look at the, the consistency of those strikes, those are very, very consistent. That's mostly coming from what I was feeling like I was doing. I, I knew where the club face was. None of the other grips are gonna be as consistent as that because it's not just what I'm used to. Now, when I go over here and take my third grip, I'm actually gonna use a really strong grip. So now that face is gonna be almost probably 30, 45 degrees closed when the logo of my glove is up toward the sky. And when I take a look at that one, I call this kind of a hammer grip. Actually, let me go grab a hammer. I'll show you exactly what I mean by that. Now with this hammer, kind of a dinky hammer here. I don't have a big one laying around, but uh, if I take this normal, or if I take this stronger grip, my hand is kind of turned more to the right like that. Again, the club would be closed compared to my wrist angle here. It's almost like if I had a hammer like this, like if I'm grabbing a hammer straight up and down like I'm a hammer and nail, and I turned it this way, and now this golf ball, I'm gonna hammer the back of the golf ball 
like that. So my grip is really turned sideways. That's kind of a Paul Azinger grip. That's kind of a, a, some of the stronger grips that you might see on the, on the PJ Tour. And the right hand would be the same thing. It's turned much more under like this. And it's almost like the right hand's gonna hammer the back of that golf ball. The advantage of this one is I don't have to get as much of the rolling of the wrist. So when you're looking at DJ really bowing the wrist, or you're looking at those guys that have the wrist really bowed through impact, the right wrist, the right knuckles really bent back. You don't have to do that if you have the hammer grip. If I actually took that hammer grip and I did that same thing, it would actually be overclosed. Too much forward shaft lean, too little loft, too much of a hook, which most players need a lot more of that. So when I tried that grip out, I gotta tell you, it actually felt the best on the contact. If I go back, I'll actually go back to the first couple drivers here. On my driver, the smash factor averaged 1.48 on my normal driver. I averaged 1.47 on my weak grip driver. And I averaged 1.48 on my uh, stronger grip driver. Now, I had one bad miss hit in there where it was only a 1.43, but I had one which was the highest, a 1.51. I gotta tell you, that felt amazing. 278 carry, 295 distance, so a little bit shorter than my normal one. 170 ball speed, 115 and a half club head speed, pretty similar on there. So what I found by this, and I think this is a kind of an interesting one, and I think this would actually be a good grip to experiment with from some players, is when I take this really strong hammer grip, it automatically sets me more to the right, what I call stable fluid spine. It automatically gets me in a position where I feel like it's really easy to get lag. It's almost impossible with this grip to come over the top like that. You take this strong grip, you're automatically gonna be coming from the inside, shallowing that club out, getting it from the inside that way. It's probably what I would call the cheater grip. This is like the kind of cheater position. You really get it strong, and man, you can get a lot of those positions uh, without having to work as hard on that. So I'd say most players tend toward the stronger grip type. Now the disadvantage of this is it was so strong that in my brain, if I move my body the way a golf swing should move, and I have a pretty good fundamentals on my swing, it feels like it is gonna hook like crazy. I feel like I'm just gonna hit crazy duck hooks to the left. So I have to really feel like I'm kind of holding off on it. And I don't like that feeling as much for some players because it's really easy if I feel like I'm holding off to almost fall back a little bit and maybe hit some chunks on there. So that would be the one disadvantage with that stronger grip. Now, no matter what you do, doesn't matter if we take a weak grip, a neutral grip or a strong grip, it's really important that we square this club face up the right way. So when I'm taking my downswing, what you're gonna see with all of those players, even the strong grip players, they're not gonna have their wrist cupped and this face way open. Everybody's gonna have their club toe up or slightly closed down or, or moderately closed down, flat left wrist here as they're coming through. So the hammer grip, we don't cup the left wrist like this. It's still gonna be flat like that. It's just not rotated as much. The neutral grip and the weaker grip, it's actually gonna be a little, it's gonna be flat or even slightly bowed when you're coming through contact. So every single player is closing that club face and getting that left wrist flat. Now I have a great drill for you that's gonna teach you exactly how to do that. It's called the tennis racket drill. And I'm gonna walk you through it step by step. So no matter which grip you use, it's gonna be way easier to get in that solid contact. I wouldn't recommend the weaker grip. But test it out in the tennis racket drill. Test out the three of these. See which one feels the most comfortable to you. All you need to do is go ahead and click the card that pops up on your screen somewhere. If you don't see that card, don't worry. Go down to the link in the description below and you'll get instant access. Best of luck. I can't wait to share with you some of the secrets of this tennis racket drill. You can pair it up with the best feeling grip. Test them out in this video. Let's go ahead and get started. Good player problems. We're gonna talk about shallowing that club shaft out as we're starting down as we're doing this rotating of the face that we worked, about, worked on in the last video. As we start this downswing, what you'll see with, with basically all uh, of the, the top players is instead of coming kind of over the top and letting the hands come out away from their body, letting the club come out away from their body, again, coming down steep into the ball and then having to open up, kind of fillet open the face and add loft to it, the flattening of the shaft should happen as soon as we start down. So as we start this downswing, what we want to have happening here, you can imagine that if I draw a line from the hosel of my club up through my right elbow, that's my swing plane line, my elbow plane. As I go to the top of the swing, I'm going to be slightly above that. And then as I start down, I want my hands to start to shallow out. I want the club 
to shallow out inside of this elbow plane. And at the same time, I'm going to be...